Good evening, working on fixing up my Steiner CS312 chipper shredder. I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to install some new knives, some cutter knives, and, and what I learned on how to source these things. So first of all, I just bought this thing a couple weeks ago. Uh, we have a bunch of branches around the property that are, we're always, we, we struggle to have enough bonfires to keep up with them, plus we don't always like having a fire, so. I um, figured a chipper, shepherd, chipper shredder would be handy to have. We also have a bunch more trees that we need to drop, so we figure we're going to have a couple more years of work here. Um, I bought this unit used, and I basically, as soon as I brought it home, we started using it. And it worked pretty darn well, especially on the small chipper, the small branches. I did notice, though, on once, once you got up to, on branches that were a little bit bigger than three, two, three inches or so, you'd start to get a pretty good pulsation that you would notice in your hands while you're trying to feed in the, the logs and it wouldn't chip them quite as well as the smaller stuff. Started to look at it a little more closely and noticed that this one of these cutter blades was was pretty well shot and the other one had a good corner missing out of it so I'm sure that that was part of the problem here. Started looking online though for replacements and learned that it was pretty much impossible to find a replacement. I could not find Steiner selling their part, like their part number appeared to be no longer available. So of course we did a little poking to see who made this unit originally. Um, and, and the original manufacturer, whose name slips my mind, I'll put it here in the bottom of the screen, but it, uh, their unit is basically mirror image, but otherwise exactly the same from what I can tell those chipper blades are still available and there's a company online that, that makes them. I figured I would give them a shot. I ordered them, just came in this evening, so put them in and uh, they appear that they're gonna be okay. So I'll show you how I put them in um, and what I had to do to make them work because they are slightly thicker. So first of all, to get the old ones off, let me grab the flashlight here. I had to take off a few things. Number one, I took off the front bristly guard here. I only took one of the two off to give you a little, your access to the top. I took off this side hatch here, which technically is probably not necessary, but it did, I think it helped some. Um, I took off of this cover, the snout cover, to give you access to these two locking rings that have a couple of set screws. That's only necessary because these new blades are thicker. You have to loosen these and, and I'll show you how to adjust that. It's not hard. Um, I took this off initially. I thought I was gonna have to reach up in that way. That You can leave this piece on. This side chute can stay on. Um, you do have to take off your belt cover on the back side though. And that's pretty easy. I think there was two or three bolts. And the reason for that is down in here, two things. One, down in here, there's another one of those rings with set screw that sets this whole flywheel shaft assembly um, in, in the fore and aft direction. Also, your belts here. You wanna make sure that your belt alignment doesn't change and that it is good because the unit you have, if it's been used and, and or um, beat on for a while, this may have moved on you. So, but this distance from this plate, I just used this as a reference and measured from here to the belts on these pulleys and these pulleys to make sure that everything was lined up. For me, I did have to move the shaft app over because the new blades are thicker, but it actually ended up making the belts better. When, when I started, these belts were actually kind of shifted, the pulleys were shifted that way here. Um, so the, the adjustment which was required for these new chipper knives actually made things better. Um, let me show you down in here. So once you take the bristles out of the way. Each knife has two bolts, 5 16 18 thread bolts, half inch. Um, they look like they're grade eight. They were pretty tight to get loose. And so I used a half inch drive ratchet with a six point socket. And then I used a pry bar wedged in like this. Um, a couple, however you can you can do it this way too for tightening or for loosening. You have to shove it on this side over here. Um, and that worked pretty well. Once I got them cracked loose with the half inch 
drive large ratchet though, I switched to a ratcheting wrench, which is low profile. And that worked better for zipping them off the rest of the way um, because specifically on these inner cutters, these bolts on these, um, it's a little bit tricky to get this specific bolt because you've got these knives that are just kind of dangling loose in here and that makes it a little bit awkward. Um, if you have an air ratchet or an electric ratchet, that's gonna be the way to go to buzz these things off quick. So once I put the new ones in, I carefully spun it to make sure that it wasn't hitting anything. But if you look closely down in there, you're actually looking down in this area. This gap between the knife and this edge, this is a pretty beefy, heavy duty metal edge. That is supposed to be one eighth of an inch. That's in the manual. So you've got this knife, knife that needs to have the one eighth of an inch. And then also if you keep rotating where the smaller one shows up here, that one would also be, needs to be one eighth of an inch. So what I did to check it was use a set of feeler gauges set up to one eighth of an inch and you just kind of carefully hold them in here set them to one eighth of an inch and, and uh, the camera's not going to focus on this but check and make sure it fits it was too once you put the newer blades in for me it was about 35 thou off um so that's when it came to having to move the, adjust the shaft here and push it back so there are three set screws two on the silver ring for me, one on the red one, loosened those up, did the same thing on that ring that's on the other side. On the other side, I had to use a, a long extension with the socket because it was, it was hard to reach down in there. Um, then these things, because they've been on here a minute, are, are stuck. I tried to initially hammer on this. It wasn't budging. Um, and I hit on it pretty hard, harder than I'd like to, because you can see I mushroomed the end here a little bit. So, open the manual, which I should have done from the beginning, and noticed it mentions to take a chisel to, to pop these things loose, like hit them in the opposite direction. So I had a couple different chisels, but the one that ended up working probably the best was just this one, which is kind of a sharp edge. But one of the, the silver ring turned no problem once I loosened them. The red one on both sides was stuck. And this side is the one you're most concerned about initially because you've got to get the shaft to push back in to accommodate, to move this whole flywheel and blades to give you that, that increase that gap to an eighth inch. I put the chisel here on the one, the one of these holes doesn't actually have a, a set screw in it. It's just, it's like a dummy. Put the chisel in here, hammered it kind of in a circle to rotate it, popped it loose. Um, it was harder on the pulley side for sure because it's kind of awkward to hold the chisel, but it, it, it will work. Once I got that to come loose, I was able to get this to scoot back. It was still pretty hard to get it to move, but um, it'll go. I think if I had to do it again, it might have been worth taking the belts off or at least relieving the tension on this tensioner because I, I, I suspect that that... You know, you've got so much load on that pulley back there with the, the belt tension that that's making it harder to move it. So the reason I took this off, and again, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary, but what I did is I used a pair of calipers to, before I moved it, to measure the depth here. It's kind of hard to do with this with one hand. Pardon me for a second while I try to get this set up. So I did this, right? to measure that distance. And then I did the same thing here from this blade back. Um, and I did it in the corner here and for the inner blade. And, and I actually did it on the outer blade. I had it over here and I just took a measurement there, wrote those down and then measured the gap using feeler gauges between the cutter knives and that block, the, the cutting block in there. And it was, again, that's where that 30 thou came from. It, it was 0.9 inches, and the manual says you're supposed to be at 1 eighth. So the difference is about point, it was, the difference was about 30 thou. So basically you take your 30 thou number, you, you subtract it from this distance, and you add it from this one, and that gives you a reference point. So while you're hammering on this thing, you can quickly check and, and see how much you're moving. I was worried it was gonna to go too far too quickly, but it still took a good bit of 
of hitting on it. And uh, yeah, so once I got it to where that used up that 30 thou through that quick check method, I came in here with the feeler gauges and did some, some more accurate measurements and got it to right about an eighth of an inch. Uh, and, and now everything seems good. So I'm gonna button it back up and, and we'll give it a shot. Finally, run through some of the tools I used. A half inch drive ratchet with a half inch socket, half inch ratcheting wrench, quarter inch ratchet with a half inch drive socket, some other sockets, I think it's seven sixteenths and, and uh, three eighths. A long extension with a 13 sixteenths, that can't be 13 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths Allen. And this is what you needed to use to get the set screws out. Um, half inch torque wrench uh, for, with, uh, I believe it was set to 20 foot pounds, which for this little guy is basically almost maxed out. Um, but I forgot to say, that is when you're retorquing those up, you set them to 20 foot-pounds. Three-quarter inch socket for these nuts here to pull that snout cover off. An assortment of hammers and pry bar for um, pushing that thing back. Um, also, the pry bar was, was handy for bracing the whole flywheel while you tightened up and, and loosened those, those bolts. Measurements-wise, pencil, paper, nothing big there. Little set of calipers some feeler gauges to make sure your eighth inch is right. Also the tape measure, that was what I used here to check and make sure that the pulley was the same distance from the reference plate when I, after moving it back, again, for me, it actually was, was better after I made the adjustment for the new blades. Um, <clears throat> the only other modification I made here while doing this, or that I plan to do rather, is I'm gonna put some washers, sorry, my camera was off. I'm gonna put some washers here on this side of these. Um, I noticed these nut bolt heads were kind of digging into this aluminum bracket. So I'm gonna use these washers in there to try and reinforce it a little bit and, and uh, hopefully it'll make it last longer. That's really all there is to it. Putting the covers and everything back on is very straightforward. I'm sure you guys are gonna be fine there. Um, if you have any questions or if you think I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below. I'd um, love to hear from you guys. Um, I love the Steiners, so uh, do what I can to, to keep this thing going. Um, I will also be sure to leave the link and the details to where I got these chipper blades from in the description of the video. Uh, they were, I don't remember the price exactly. I'll put that in there too. It was a little over a hundred bucks, I think probably around 150. So. Uh, have to try and take care of them. But I think they will probably last me the rest of my life as long as I don't accidentally shove a, a, a piece of metal pipe in here or something. Thank you. Long video. Appreciate you guys. Uh, have a good day. Bye.